All right, so what's up, everybody? Here again on another episode of Eli and Mike, and we have an amazing guest here from the state of Alabama. We have right. Ricky Carruth. Let's go, let's what's going go. on? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Bama in the house. Right, right. Wait, wait, hold on. What did you say? Bama. 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 No, okay. Bama. So it's a short for Alabama. Tide. Yeah. You know, okay. long, I was like, you haven't heard this yet. You didn't no, I guess up. Alabamas are the only ones that can say that, right? Or no, you you can, any, dude. Everybody says it because right. they know we're going to win every single year. Hey, there oh. you go. College football. <laughs> you know, like, you know we're going to win every <laughs> right, single year. Right. Like, it's, Bama. It's Bama. Now. There you go. That's which, amazing. Which is so crazy because I uh, we never knew that you were from Alabama. I don't know if you get this a lot. It's, it's, it's insane, bro. Like, everybody yeah. thinks I'm from Cali. Right. No, yeah, Cali. Or I, I was either California or New York. I was like, yeah. he's from we, one of these, like, I'm from New York, you know, too. From I've one of these too, yeah. huge places. But and it's crazy because I'm like, yeah. but listen to my accent. You know <laughs> okay, true. Like, now, okay. I feel like now I feel Why it. do you think that? Yeah, yeah. And um, maybe you could tell us a little bit about yourself. You know, where are you from? Um, what do you do? Yeah, so yeah. No, no, no. I'm, I'm from Gulf Shores, Alabama. So it's like, okay. there's Florida, and then, like, the beaches of Florida extend into Alabama, like, uh-huh. 40 wow. miles of okay. white sand. Sandy beaches that look exactly like Florida, no right? Wow. So there's like Destin, that. Panama City, Fort Walton, Pensacola, Florida, and it goes right into Orange Beach and oh, Gulf Shores. Okay, it's just like beautiful, and people don't know about it, right? Because it's like Alabama, and you think <laughs> Alabama, and you think like, you know, redneck, like backwoods, <laughs> like country. You know, that's what you think of. No, okay, yeah, okay. Yeah. I didn't what? think of beaches right when you said it. No, 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 nobody does. Right. But, like, we have 7 million visitors every year, which wow. is more than Hawaii. Wow. It's insane. Oh and, and what's a good place to visit in Alabama? Is there is there even a Gulf place? Gulf Shores, Alabama. Gulf, Gulf Shores, Alabama that's is the place to go. go. Yeah, that's amazing. where okay. you go because it's on amazing. the beach. Like, the food's amazing. Mm-hmm. It's spread out. Um, it. Like, Destin is an, is an island that's very compressed. Like, okay. It's, like, it's very compact. Like, mm-hmm. it's it, it gets jammed up, Got right? It. Gulf Shores, Orange Beach, Foley mm-hmm. is north of there. Mm-hmm. And, it, and it's, like you can breathe you know okay it's like, okay it's not like this little island that you're <laughs> right. kind of like locked into when got you go it. down there and you were born and raised here born and raised oh, there wow. yeah 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 so i was actually born in huntsville which is the very top of the state mm-hmm. okay right that's my mom and dad are from right oh, okay. and then they moved we lived in birmingham which is in the middle of the state we lived okay. there for a while i actually lived in oklahoma city for a while when i was really little and we're in birmingham till i was in about fourth grade okay, okay. and then okay. we moved down to the beach Amazing. and when i was in fifth grade is when when I was when we moved down to the beach, oh, so cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. So so basically, it's all I know. Got right. It. Fantastic. Yeah. And and as far as you know, you be, you're right here visiting uh, California. What right. was your perspective coming out here to Cali? As far as what? As far as you, are you looking to are you surveying the area to buy more real estate? Or are no, you no, what, no. what's your goal I, here? I get I get like I travel two to three times a month, um, speaking all over the, the yeah. country too. Just real okay. estate agents. Uh-huh. So every event I go, so I'm, so I'm a real estate agent. Like, I have one of the largest followings of real estate agents, right, in the world. Fantastic. And um, it's very... Congrats to that. It's a very niche following. Right. 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 I mean, it's real estate agents. Yeah. My, my content <laughs> yeah. is for real estate agents. All right. So fantastic. Right. So you we, pulled me. You pulled yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> he is a real estate agent, so, right, you know. Right, right. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And are you uh, married? Do you have any children? Mm-hmm. 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 Yep. Married for five years. Have Amazing. a four-year-old. Gosh, yeah, and so, and so we, we travel two to three yeah. times a month. They come with me everywhere. That was okay. my next question. Right, yes, so they come definitely. with me everywhere. Got it, and got uh, it. We, we, we've seen it all. Wow. Like, we've been everywhere. Like, oh, we, cool. like when I say two to three times yes. a month, we're in a different city two to three times <laughs> a month. <laughs> That's all fascinating. All the country. Wow. And so we've seen everywhere. Mm-hmm, and, mm-hmm. Um, and my four-year-old, I never went to Disney until I was like 32. Okay. okay. Right? okay. My parents didn't take me to Disney. Same, and all this stuff. Same like, here, my right? My yeah. year old daughter has been there like 10 times. Oh my <laughs> God. Disneyland, <laughs> Disney yeah. World, right. the parks, California like Avengers. done it all, right? As she should be, yeah. She's not even like tall enough to ride all the rides. She's already yeah. all the <laughs> things, right? Right. right. Times. But she's been to Vegas uh-huh. like, you know, six times. Amazing. She's been to Manhattan. Oh been to gosh. Puerto Rico. Been to Miami. Wow. Like, Everywhere you can think yes. of, mm-hmm. she has been already. Okay. Like, yes, you know what I'm saying? She like knows exactly how to fly. Okay. Like she, she hops right into character, hops in that seat. She's mm-hmm. looking out the window, puts her little headphones oh on with her iPad. Wow. <laughs> oh show. Oh my God. Love it. That's Love amazing. It, yeah. So, so being in real estate as, as a real estate agent and professional, you also notice you're a coach. Uh, you speak in front of a lot of people very often. Yes. Um, what is the difference you see be, behind California and Alabama? What are the differences between each other's state? In terms of just like for real estate agents or the market in general? More like the market in general. Yeah. Is there is there a the difference market. in how things appreciate there, how the market is stimulated by how the economics of the state are? Yeah, yeah. So in, in where I'm at in Bama, it's, uh, it's the lowest property taxes in the country. Okay. Okay. So like I live in a $2 million home. Our property taxes are like 
five G's, oh my right? God. Ain't that right? something? Wow. So out okay. Here, your property taxes would be what for a two million dollar home? Mm-hmm. Probably one and a quarter percent. So that's going to be right about thirty thousand. Thirty thousand right. wow. or so, right? Wow. So yeah. like we're so like it's like five six okay. thousand a year, okay. right? Yes. For for my property taxes, right. so right. it's it's literally six times lower. Wow. So when you think about investment properties, that's why I invest in my market mm-hmm. because I'm just so lucky mm-hmm. to be in like the it, it, the cost of living is probably not the lowest. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like our average price of a house in my market is about 4 500,000. Okay. Okay. Condos on the beach are like 750. Wow. Okay. Right average. Wow. Mm-hmm. Right on the um, beach. Right on the beach. Wow. Right? Wow. And so um like there are definitely cheaper places. Mm-hmm. Like you go other places in Bama, it, it, it you know the average price is like two fifty. I even wow. know places in other in other states like Ohio and different places that I've talked to agents where like their average price is literally under mm-hmm. two hundred. And I'm like, why? I didn't know that it still wow. existed. Yeah. Like, this yeah. is that's recent. insane. This is, oh this wow, is recent. It's oh like, okay, recent. From like four years ago. Yeah, we're now like it's like three. Ago. No, I'm talking about today. Oh, wow. There's like wow. places okay. that are still average price oh points of like around two hundred thousand. Ain't that something? God, yes. Move, like move <laughs> okay. now. Yeah, yeah, we're yeah. we're literally pushing clients off into get me a co-signer, figure out how to increase your income because we're getting buyers that don't qualify for anything out here. Right. They don't make enough money. The cost of living is ridiculous out here, mm-hmm. and I think that's why oh I drove God. a lot of people out. Mm-hmm. Right? A lot of people move to Florida, which which mm-hmm. is not mm-hmm. it's it's better, but it's right. It's not like property taxes there are maybe two to three times higher than Alabama Got and it. Florida, mm-hmm. okay. and then their insurance went through the roof. Right, and so. It's not that much better. It's better than right. Cali, but it's not. Yeah. yeah, it's not a huge, you know, mm-hmm. difference. But um, yeah, the cost of living out here. Yeah. I was telling my wife because like, went to this real estate event. I saw all yes. these people, and like, yes. I'm looking at the people, and I'm like, I'm thinking, how do you guys afford to live out here? Mm-hmm. Because mm-hmm. it costs like, for what? Like my house is mm-hmm. like two mil, yes. dude. That is definitely a ten million dollar or fifteen <laughs> right. million dollar house out here. There's no doubt. No, about that, that, I sit on an acre in a gated community. Wow. I don't see my neighbors. Okay. I'm on a golf oh course. I'm a port in place wow. concrete house. Mm-hmm. I've got a lifetime warranty roof. Like this is a smart house. Like yeah. th- 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 this is a this is a ten to fifteen million dollar right. house <laughs> in Cali. Yes. Wow. Right. I yeah. bought it for one point one in two thousand twenty. It's worth two today. Gosh, congratulations! congratulations. That's our dream. Wow. We'll never move. Amazing. And right when you said two million, I knew like it was a ten fifteen million exactly. dollar property here mm-hmm. because exactly. You know, I was like, like here, like my wow. buddy, I went to do a podcast with him yes. yesterday morning, and uh-huh. he lives in this house, and he pay, he shot it in his house, which it was an amazing shot. Right. Yes. Like the way he has it set up and everything, oh, it's it, cool. Love it. And um, the Ferrari, right? The Ferrari. Oh, I guy, saw the that. Ferrari that was was yeah. Money. Yeah. Yes. Yes. I love his podcast it, 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 dude uh-huh. it, i mean it was it was a great shot and like, right and like i'm looking at his house and stuff and he's like this is 2.5 million and i'm like mm. dude yeah. what yeah. <laughs> dude you're like you're like you can like right. you can like knock you can yeah. be in your yard and knock on your da- neighbor's house yeah that's right that, exactly. that's I'm that's like, right yeah you know for me like uh-huh. i've been like privacy yes. is what i'm paying for right right, right. And i'm gonna yeah. pay two and a half million and i'm like st- like mm-hmm. that house in bama bro <laughs> <laughs> oh, that, right, that, right. That house yeah. is honestly that yeah. house is like five, six hundred thousand. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Like in, right in in exactly, exactly. And so I think that's I think that's one of the biggest mm-hmm. differences in here and there is Got just it. the cost of living is so low. Yeah, and and I feel like a, a the I I feel personally that I would rather live about an hour away from Beverly Hills or Los Angeles because everything's so expensive. But I wouldn't mind investing. Because obviously the appreciation factors here in this area mm. go up a lot faster because yeah. of just the yeah. pure amenities of what's surrounding this area. Sure. I mean, you got, I mean, Orange County is Disneyland, but here you have everything. Mm. Very local. Obviously, the traffic doesn't really help, but mm-hmm. versus where we live, we're right. what, about an hour away. Yes. And you can get houses for that might be $2 million that are about $10 million out here. Mm. But you got to commute, you got to drive a little bit further. Right, right. Um, mm-hmm. But I think that's fascinating because a lot of people don't, they'd rather just strictly stay in the LA County area. There, there is a lot to be said about being able to literally be where you want to go in a matter of seconds. Right. Mm-hmm. Like, like where we live, yeah. we, we, we take our golf cart, okay, a mile in our subdivision. Like mm-hmm. w- we go through our subdivision, and when we hit out of our subdivision, we're literally in this huge shopping center right. with like that. 10 restaurants, movie Love theaters, that. like Target, Starbucks, like steak houses. Mm-hmm. Um, the beach. Yeah, every, right. Well, the beach isn't right there, okay. right? We're okay. about 10 minutes from the beach Got from it. that point, right? But like the golf cart yeah. ride, mm-hmm. right? To get in your golf cart and go shopping wow. for anything you want, to go wow. to the movies, to get ice cream, mm-hmm. to get a coffee, to go to Target, to so do whatever you want to do, right? So worth it. It, 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 like I would 
pay more for where we are just because of that. Yes. I stayed with my buddy in St. Pete, um, Florida, one time, and he stays in this building. He rents this apartment, right? Mm-hmm. And it's downtown. Mm-hmm. And I never really, like, experienced the whole living in downtown or right. staying in downtown thing yeah. until then. This yeah. was years and years back. And, like, we'd literally go downstairs, and we're downtown. Like, we go like, walk in a coffee shop, and then we went over here and did this. And we listened to a little band over here. Right. Yeah. And, like, when we walked in Publix and got some stuff for it and then went back, and I was like, I could live like this. Right. Yeah. I walk downstairs, yeah. and this uh-huh. everything I need is literally right there. I don't even get in my car. Right. 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 And so I think that's what a lot of people pay for is, like, right. the convenience yes. of literally being right there. Mm-hmm. And I know this will sound funny because me and you are real estate agents, so – but I've been telling this a lot to my buyers, sellers, investors, whatever it may be, that it sounds funny, but location, 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 it, it's truly, really, really what it is. And it, mm-hmm. is. it sounds funny because that's what you hear in movies or on TV yeah. or wherever, but when you really, really break it down, that's what it's, it's all about is location, is. Yeah. location, location. And what's so cool with now, with, with, yeah. with the world today, mm-hmm. is I can live in Alabama mm-hmm. and everybody thinks I'm from Cali. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> exactly, exactly. That's what we talk so, about. So I don't so have to cool. live in Cali. Yeah, exactly. People think I'm already living right, in Cali. Right. That's right. I totally didn't know. I was like, where is he from? Like, <laughs> yeah, we need to have him on sh- our show. And then luckily you're coming here to LA. So yeah. we were blessed to have you. Um, Thank you. But I do have um, a question to ask you about real estate. Uh, so you had a, a reel recently, and I, it was so intriguing to watch because for myself, I was not in that group of real estate agents, but you stated that you know 49% of real estate agents in the last year have only closed one or zero yeah. transactions, right? Yeah. So what is your mindset on this? Because you're somebody who can list 100 properties in one year, yeah. and a real estate agent that could be sitting right next to you mm-hmm. probably only closed zero or one transaction. Yeah. So like. Well, there's a one of two chances, right? There's mm-hmm. it's it's fifty percent chance that this person next to me exactly. closed one or none. Yes. Um, these well, numbers are crazy. Well, it, it, it's it's exaggerated right now because everybody got in because of COVID. Mm-hmm. Um, that yeah. was a flood of agents. So there That's were two right. things that happened. There was there was COVID that happened. So the pandemic happened where people were like, okay, maybe my job isn't secure as I thought it was, you know. And I'm sitting in my house doing nothing. The real estate course is four hundred bucks. People are making millions. Let me dive in here. That was that was one part of it. The other That's part right. of it was the market exploded mm-hmm. as soon as the economy reopened. So then they were like, really like, well, I'm really going to do this now mm-hmm. because the market's so good and people are just, you know, prices are shooting up and everything. So that rush that we had, 2020 to 22, until interest rates started coming up, I think inspired, you know, pushed a lot of people. Yeah to try to get into real estate. And that's what happens every time we get a rush in the market. That's we have right. a lot of people, a lot of new agents flood the market that think it's gonna be easy money. Mm-hmm. They get in and realize it's not. Right. And then we have these stats like this, you know, where, you know, um, you know, like the transaction per agent was like, is like way down. It's like under two yes. per, per agent or whatever yes. it is. Um, I was shook. Yeah. W- w- which, which, is, which is a lot lower than the average, right? Uh-huh. Uh, the, the, of like say the 10 year average or whatever. Right. Um, but that's just because so many, that doesn't mean that that's what it, what it truly is, is okay. What are the agents that are producing and what, how many transactions per producing agents Mm -hmm. are we at? The ones that aren't doing any transactions shouldn't even be considered in the stats. Right. right? Right. So that, and so when you look at that, Uh that probably hasn't changed very much. Uh It's just the fact that you added a bunch of non-producers that skew the numbers to look like this. And that's how these stats kind of, kind of get to this way. And you, you look at those stats and if you're a new agent, or you don't really understand what I just said, then you look at it and you think, that sucks, I'm not gonna, I don't wanna be an agent. Or if you're an agent that got in and you're one of the ones that sold one or none, right. you know, you're probably thinking, well look, 50% of people, there's no way I can make it. Exactly. I mean, 50% mm-hmm. of people aren't making it, I might as well yeah. just get out of the business. Right. And that's what we're right. seeing. Mm-hmm. Uh, we saw a big that. drop in agents so far this year, and we normally do in January because that's when dues come up. Mm-hmm. You know, and like right. these agents that like the numbers you see that drop down, they have been out of real estate for a year. It just hasn't come to fruition yet in the data because they're still officially on board until that's those dues right. are due. They that's don't right. pay the dues, and then they take them off the roster. That's right. That's right. Um, so what we're seeing as far as the drop in membership right now is really agents that have really been out of the game for a long time you know, even more than a year. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And um, so you've got, you've got just the market that's just, just eating agents away right now. Then you've got 
um, the fact that a lot of these bigger brokerages with the the lawsuits happening mm-hmm. have said, oh, you, you know, we're not making it mandatory that you guys have right. to be part of NAR that's anymore. Right. That's so right. then that's going to skew the numbers because you're going to see what you're going to see is the NAR membership go down, right? Mm-hmm. But but then you've got people that are not members of NAR that are still in the game. Mm-hmm. So like right now, I feel like you know there's like 1.5 members of NAR and you know agents that are part of the National Association of Realtors. Yes. Mm-hmm. Then you got like another million that aren't that are active agents. Right. And so for me, it's like, are we going to go to a million members at NAR, but still be at 2.5 total? Mm-hmm. We just have 1.5 that that aren't members of NAR. Yes. You know, it's like right. I want to see the data on the people that aren't part of NAR. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, like I, I don't I don't see that day. I don't, right. I don't, I don't right. know where to find that data. Like how many right. active agents are there that aren't part of NAR? Because I'm just guessing a million. I've right. heard 1.5. Yes. So I've heard I've heard 1.5 that we got 1.5 in R. So we got three million total in the U.S. Mm-hmm. Those are hypothetical. Like, right. where's right. the real data behind agents that are active and not part of R? And then out of those agents, how many are actually productive? Because then, and I talked to Lawrence Yun yeah. about this, mm-hmm. the um, NAR's um, chief economist. Amazing. Um, and, and it was like I was like, what about this? You know, what about this stat here? Like, right. how do we? What are those agents? You know, mm-hmm. they're not part of NAR. What are they? Right, right, and right. And he was like, well, most of them are just kind of inactive. Oh, wow. And they're still like with a brokerage per se. So they're so, uh, they still have a license, but they're mm-hmm. not really selling and they quit paying their NAR membership. So yeah. they're not part of NAR, but they're not really in the game. So I think most mm-hmm. of those agents are either A, not in the game. Got it. Or B, commercial agents. Mm-hmm. Okay, okay. Right, because commercial agents, right. they're not a part of NAR. Mm-hmm. That's mm-hmm. all, re- NAR is residential. Right. Right, right, right. So the so the the commercial agents they don't they don't do uh, MLS. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. That's residential. That's right. right. They do CoStar. They do LoopNet. Yeah. They do all these off Correct. market yeah. deals. Correct. Right. And so you know it's it's interesting to think about the whole thing. The podcast today, one of the panels I sat on today, um, the guy was bringing up um, Zillow mm-hmm. and AI, yeah, and the replacement <laughs> of agents, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And it was it was it was very interesting, right? You know, to hear his side of like where all that could go yeah uh you know and like how far ai could really take you know the transaction process right yeah. and how much responsibility could it take off of the agents to the point that you barely need an agent that's right that's right that's right, that's right. Um, i know so there's a lot of changes i believe so like many. not necessarily like agents becoming obsolete but could be right there's just it's such an unknown like yeah. where is the real estate industry headed you have these commission mm-hmm. lawsuits mm-hmm. you have yes. a, a technology advancing so fast right you've got companies that literally want to create something where agents necessarily maybe don't even exist you have mm-hmm. companies that are gunning for that scenario right. so that they can capitalize yes. yes right there's so much going right. on in the industry right it's now wild. it's you, wild it's wild literally you have no idea where we're going to stand in exactly. five years and, right. and even five years ago um, yeah that's how we felt I, I maybe it wasn't that long ago but it was purple bricks Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. And, you know, it was like a lot of agents were getting, like, mm-hmm. paranoid that their job was going to get taken away yeah. from AI and whatnot. All it was was a discount broker that went out of business. That's right. I mean, yeah. you know, the discount brokers have not cracked the code on how to be profitable. Mm-hmm. Right. And they weren't using AI as they're using No, they weren't now. using AI. No, 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 no. no. AI wasn't even hardly even around right. when right. Bricks came around. Right, right. So, like, the thing about discount brokers is it's like, Traditional, so people don't realize this part of it. You know, mm-hmm. the general public thinks, "Oh my God, you made thirty thousand dollars! Right, I got to pay my broker, I got to pay taxes, That's I got to right. pay yes. um, all my expenses, mm-hmm. I got to pay my marketing, I got to pay know. my admin, I got to pay all." Yeah. I run a business, by the way. Right. Yes. You know, these people are used to W two yeah. checks where they get mm-hmm. to spend every dollar they get. That's right. I don't get to spend every dollar I get. I have we to pay don't. all these ex- business expenses. Yes. I'm a ten ninety nine guy. I'm an independent yes. contractor, bro. Yes. Right. Yes, right. Exactly. You right. don't understand, right? right. right. <laughs> and and so like. <laughs> What, what happens is it's like, oh, my God, you know, 3%. Well, I probably made like one, maybe, yeah, right? exactly. And it may be. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, and so when, you, when, you, when, when a discount broker comes <laughs> yes. along and they're charging one total, right. well, they're losing money. Absolutely. It costs yeah. 2% to run, let's just say hypothetical here, it costs 2% to do the transaction yes. with taxes yes. and insurance and all expenses and marketing and right. all the stuff that mm-hmm. we do. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right? So say it takes you 2% and they're charging one, yes. they're a discount broker. Well, they're losing. A percent on every deal, and that and that 
hy- this hypothetical scenario we're talking about. I mean, right. that, that we're saying hypothetical, but yep. that's literally the reality of what happens with discount brokers and why they go out of business. Right. There's been like two or three of them that have come so along, many, yes. tried to go big, right. and went out of business. Right. And I think this is where, this is why traditional agents still exist, and 90% of people use real estate agents. Right. Even though they don't have to, mm-hmm. it's their choice, right? right? And ninety percent of buyers and sellers <laughs> use real estate agents yeah. as a choice um, because they can't find that service anywhere for any cheaper. Mm-hmm. The discount guys have come and went, right? right. There's right. still there's That's some discount right. people out there, and mm-hmm. you can you can do some things, right. but right. they don't have great service. Right. The Absolutely. discount people are giving you discount service, yes. so right? They feel that right away. Yeah, yeah. And, oh, and, and, yeah. and they're like my clients, you know, when I used to, have, uh, when this kind of came up and they would want to go use a discount broker, mm-hmm. I'd be like, awesome, go right. use them, right? Yeah. Because I knew yeah, it was yeah. going to happen. Mm-hmm. They would right. use them that deal, but never again. They yes. come right back, and it happened every time. They come right, right back to me right. and use me every time yes. and pay me whatever I want. Right. Yeah. Right. We because even they had a family speak. come back because they were right. working with their family who was a discount broker. And then they're like, oh, like, we need you guys. And we're like, we try telling you, but you know what I mean? You want a family. I don't even try to okay. tell them anymore. I'm like, right. knock yourself out. Let that's right. Goes. Yeah, I'm, right yeah. I'm right here if you need me. Exactly. Right? You know, and, right. And they come right back yes. and pay me whatever I want right. because right. of the level of service they got. Exactly. And so exactly. that's the thing. Discount broker just mm-hmm. haven't cracked the code on how to be mm-hmm. profitable mm-hmm. at a discount because mm-hmm. it, it doesn't exist yet. Right. right. Maybe AI changes that landscape where mm-hmm. you can do discount and give good service and be profitable. See, that's there's so many unknowns with all this. That's right. Um, but that's that's the code they haven't cracked, like how to be profitable at a discount. And that's why traditional agents that charge the 3% yes. per side, 2.5% per side, right. 2 per side, yes. Yes. still exist. Mm-hmm. 90% of people use us still. Right. right. Um, even though we've had all these advancements like technology, yes. you know, information. Like mm-hmm. consumers have more information now at the at, in, in the palm of their hands than they've ever had yes but the usage of real estate agents is at an all-time high right now Mm -hmm. so so we're at an all-time high with the amount of people that use agents Mm. and we're at an all-time high with the amount of information those people have most people are like well what if they have all the information i'm like we're at an all-time high but they're still they're using us even more why is that well it's because the more information they have it just becomes more and more chinese to them Right. It's like information overload. They don't know so what they're like, oh my God, there's all yeah. this. I don't know. Too much access. Here. You yeah. just handle it professional. Yes, exactly. Right. So the more information wow. they have is not yeah. going to result in mm-hmm. agents being used less. Right. It, right. it, has, it has resulted. This, this isn't a fact. Mm-hmm. It has resulted in agents being used more. Wow. Right? Wow. And so these are all things Amazing. that I think about, you, yes. know, yes. you know, like. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. I, I love geek this out so on this much. Stuff. I love that. No, it's, it's fascinating. It's like so amazing. I love this what, stuff. What, so what's your thought on, you know, there's, I feel like a lot of agents and lenders are very desperate nowadays. They, I feel like some of them do each other's job. I'll give you the perfect example is how do you feel there's an agent that has both licenses? Yeah. Um, just for the fact of, hey, I want to be educated. I want to have both licenses, but they start dipping into each transaction. Well, if they just want to be educated, that's one thing, right? Right. If they're, if they're handling both, I haven't, I dabbled in this, right? I've had so many companies try to pitch me on the whole you know Mm -hmm. agent get a loan officer license and make a Mm -hmm. cut of the thing send your people so many companies right right? and 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 i went down the rabbit hole of trying to understand is this an opportunity Mm -hmm. the problem is is that how much are these agents making per deal on the mortgage side when they do this? A, mm-hmm. right? right? It's not much. Not much. It's not much. Right. right. But yet to get your mortgage license is absolute hell on earth. <laughs> I agree. Okay. Oh, I, I, agree. I, I, I can understand yeah. that 100%. Right? It yes. Is. It is. Yes. It is. So you got to do the 20 hour yes. course. You got to go take the test, which yes. is, is a, like I did it all. Like yeah. I, did, I, I have yeah, my same, own same. MLO. Like mm-hmm. I, I did it, right? Yes. And, um, and then it's like, now you got to do the training for the company they're with. Now you got to like it's a lot of time <laughs> yeah. invested right. into yeah. this yeah. to try to make an extra five hundred to a thousand bucks per deal. Mm-hmm. Thanks, but no thanks. Right. It doesn't make <laughs> sense agree. for the agent. Yeah. That's right. And so, you know, when these companies go down the go down that road of trying to build a, a business model around getting agents licensed as loan officers to make a cut of their own deals, mm-hmm. what they find is that agents say, "Oh yeah, let me make money off mortgages." Mm-hmm. 
right? Okay, go take your class, go take your test, and then you never hear from them again. Right. I mean, they're being a, they're out there being a real estate agent. Yeah. That's How do right. I have time to do a twenty hour yeah. court. Like very few agents mm -hmm. are in a position like myself where I can actually decide. Okay, I want to do that. I want to yeah. invest some time here. Right. Most agents are in a position where they have to invest every second into trying to make another commission so they can continue to build their business. Yeah. You know. Yeah. And so. Yeah. I don't know if that answers your question. No, that no it does because I, I feel like agents should be fully committed to doing their exact do work too. versus I, and lenders the same thing. Like mixing now, each other is difficult. Now, when this buyer lawsuit thing comes to fruition and the landscape changes, you know, and this is what I tell a lot of these mortgage companies that try to get into this, getting agents licenses, LOs, paying them a split. I say, you know what? I, this could be the future, mm -hmm. but it's too early. Mm -hmm. You, you could be way ahead of your time. You know, that's what I tell these guys okay. when they come at me. I'm okay. like, I'm like, this could be actually the future. Right. But we're way, there's, n right now, there's no opportunity for me mm -hmm. to go out and try to get thousands of agents, mm -hmm. licenses, L LOs. I'd be banging my head against the wall because mm -hmm. none of them would do it. Right. Right. right? Yeah. And, and, and so it doesn't make any sense right now. But later on, when there's no buyer agent commission figured into the deal, mm -hmm. and the buyer is like, if the buyer's like, I can't pay for my commission, right? I can't, I can't pay. Then a dual license, perhaps somebody has their real estate license and their loan officer license. Mm -hmm. Maybe at that point that becomes a thing because now you're do you're doing your services for free to the mm -hmm. buyer, but you're getting paid on the mortgage side okay. to go out okay. there and represent them and help them and everything else if they use you as the mortgage side. Right. And now you're getting compensated. You see what I'm saying? Right. Maybe that you're getting com now you're getting compensated right. something. Right. And if you're in that scenario, you're you are the loan officer. You're not just an agent getting paid a split. Maybe you yes. get a full point, a full you know point yes. and a half or whatever, whatever it is, and it makes it a little bit more interesting on that side. Right. So I think about these things. Like, right. Okay. Right. A lot of people are pushing this. What you're saying. A lot yes. of people are pushing this. Yes. Dual license, mortgage, and, right. and, and agent. And nobody's really cracked the code on it per se. And I think because it's a little early and it may, it may not never come to fruition. But I think this buyer agent lawsuit thing could be something that makes that a reality where yes. you may see that as a new norm yes. where people are saying, don't worry about the commission. I'll get mm -hmm. paid on the mortgage side if you use me and I'll make sure you get the best deal. I'll represent you. Mm -hmm. There you go. See what I'm saying? Yeah. And Could it, be a thing later. Right. And if they tie in the AI, possibly that'll even make it easier for the agent, you know, whatever they can do to tie in the AI to make the job easier for the yeah. agent. And then they could help out with the mortgage side. But again, it's too soon for that. A like lot of you people said. talk about AI yeah. and what's it going to do. And I'm like, it's going to, it's going to create a scenario where you sell more properties in less time. Right. Same thing Zillow did for us. Right. Same thing for sellbyowner.com mm -hmm. did for us. Same thing MLS did for us. Same thing social media did for us. So it you're not like you're not like scared of like the the lock that's going to be on the door that an, any buyer could you know go put in their code and go into the property like these type of technologies don't want I don't think a lot of sellers will like that. It's right. not up to me. Yeah. I don't think a lot of property owners. There, there's going to be property owners that are okay with yes. that. And I don't, I don't think there's going to be property right. owners who want supervision by right. somebody who's looking out for their best interest yes. to be yeah. in the house with yes. unknown individuals. Right. I feel the same. I don't I think you're going to, you mm -hmm. know, I don't think that, you know, that could turn into a thing. Mm -hmm. And listen, we're this generation. Mm -hmm. Yes. The next generation, right. they <laughs> love strangers walking through their house. Right. Okay? Right. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. That could turn into something uh -huh. like that. Who knows? Yes. There's a lot of unknowns with this industry, right? It's, it's so crazy so because – you know, travel agents got taken out and that's right. all these other industries, bookstores and, and get that's taken right. out by right. technology and yes. you know, innovation and everything else. But here we are still sitting strong. We're still getting right. five, six percent. Yes. We're still here, yes. even though all these technological advances have happened. That's mm -hmm. what's so interesting about our, we have a very unique, strange industry that we're in mm -hmm. that we're still standing. And not only that, we really haven't got hurt at all, basically, right. as far as our pay. And so like true. You, 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 right. look, you look at like so the commissions, mm -hmm. but then like it's a percentage. Mm -hmm. Prices are up what like a hundred percent since two thousand ten. Yeah, oh my that's gosh. right. So like, our, so think about it. Our commissions, the percentage hasn't really changed, but prices have went up a hundred percent. We our, our so our pay per house has literally doubled since two thousand ten. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right. Right. And, and and like we're still getting it. Yes. Right. So yes. It, it, it's it's such a unique 
strange animal, so the real strange, estate so agent strange. industry. Yes. And like where it goes from here, nobody knows. It's one of those right. spin the bottle things. You right. don't right. know what it's going to land on. Right. And, and <laughs> yeah. to say scared, right. I'm not scared of anything mm-hmm. because Love you know what? I built a personal yes. brand. Yeah, I can go do anything I want to do. Mm-hmm. That's right. This industry disappears. That's right. I, I go, I go, I get into the next one. Fantastic. Right? Another yes. one door closes, another one opens. That's right. You know, that's the position I put myself mm-hmm. in. Mm-hmm. Did I go out there and focus only on calling property owners to help them buy and sell, followed by a weekly email to make a million dollars a year? Mm-hmm. Yep, I did it for mm-hmm. fifteen years until I'm making right. a million bucks. Right. Absolutely. Yes. And you I brought up the you brought up the key point, personal brand. I think a lot of agents fail at that. They they just go over. I'm a real estate agent. This is what I do. Instead of building a brand, <coughs> kind of like. What you got going on? We have a brand. I think what they're not doing is thinking about the future. Right. Right. They're thinking you know, about now, right? Yeah, they're thinking about now. Mm-hmm. I mean, that that you know, it's like you know, set yourself up for the future. Okay. Mm-hmm. So, like, yes. if you're an agent, yes, do social media to get some leads and to mm-hmm. do some stuff, mm-hmm. but also do it to learn social media. Mm-hmm. Also, do it to learn how how that system works, how that machine mm-hmm. actually works yeah. to actually drive traffic and get eyeballs. And build right. businesses on it right. because once you understand how to do that, you can go build any kind of business you want mm-hmm. on social media, right? That's right. So I mean, it's like that's the game, honestly. That's, that's the game I play. Right. Right. Yeah. You know. Do you, do you believe in investing right now in this market space? One hundred percent. So, what, if mm-hmm. you were to pick a location as to where it would be the niche area to invest your money in, where would you look in? Anywhere the, where you can make money. Anywhere, so yeah, it's, there's no, there's nothing off the limits. It could no. be Cali, could be I Alabama. I, like, I mean, I don't like Cali because they're eviction laws. Yes. They, they are very strenuous here. It's insane. Crazy, like yes. on the daily, it's just yeah, it's, oh my gosh, it's really tough to get yeah. somebody out of a house here, right? Yeah, I don't like right. that. And where right. I'm at, I can get somebody out in 45 days. They're gone. Okay, the cop comes by and like <laughs> literally moves them out of the house physically, wow. right? Right. Okay. If they're not out by then. Yeah. So, um, like where, wherever you find a deal. You might it, want to take it, it right? It, it dep- okay, so like, what kind of investment were you talking about? Buying and holding, flipping, wholesaling, commercial, multifamily, right? That kind of depends. Yes. Right. Right. Any flip, you can flip in any market, wholesale in any market. Uh, the, the game there is buying way lower than what it's worth. Absolutely. If it, yeah. You, you're not going to buy retail and flip something. You yes. know, the people that buy retail hoping to flip it in a year. There's a lot of risk there. Mm-hmm. It could Definitely. be worth the same. It could be worth a little more. It could be worth right. less. When you That's sell, right. you That's have right. costs in selling with commissions yeah. and closing costs and title and escrow and all this stuff. Mm-hmm. You know, you it's got to appreciate quite a bit just to get into the positive. Yes. And then, but if you're a flipper, you have to have a process of, of getting leads or properties that are way under market That's for whatever right. reason, right? That's I buy right. them on the courthouse right. steps. I pay cash for properties on the courthouse wow. steps. That's Fantastic. how I get my yeah. Gosh, amazing. And then when I find one that fits my rental portfolio, my buy and hold, I'll keep it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, and right. if I don't like it, you know, I got it under value. I fix it. I flip it. I make a little money that I pay taxes on. I don't like flipping. Okay. I like okay. buying and holding. I made way. Yes. I was telling somebody on a podcast this. I realized this. I I flipped a third of the number of properties I've flipped. Mm-hmm. I've made probably twenty or thirty times more money on. So let me say it again. I've flipped about 150 properties. Okay. I have 40 doors that I own. Mm-hmm. Okay. Out of the 40 doors, which is about a third of how many houses I flipped, mm-hmm. I've made about 20 or 30 more times money, times more money wow. on those wow. than I did all the flips. Wow. Right? Because flips is just short term. Then you pay taxes. Mm-hmm. And then you're done. You don't right. really, That's you're right. not really squeezing the juice for everything you could have got out of mm-hmm. that property in terms of cash flow, appreciation. You're just turning and burning, which is good if you need money. Right. I don't need money. Right. I need, right. I need wealth. Yes. The only yes. way to be build wealth That's right. is to build is to buy cash flowing assets and keep them. Right. And watch them appreciate. And are your um, cash flowing assets are they like multi units? Yeah, they it's just, everything. So okay. I've got commercial, multi, yes. single family, Amazing. everything. You, you damage yeah. to the short term rentals too. Well, I, 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 bought, I, don't, I don't like to hold those, especially on the beach, because we have hurricanes and we have assessments mm-hmm. and there's all kinds of different variables that, I'm, that are a little more volatile than, mm-hmm. than a single family home, mm-hmm. you know, or, or a duplex or fourplex, right? Um, so, I, yeah, I've bought plenty of beachfront condos mm-hmm. and rented them for two years and then sold them and did really well. Mm-hmm. Would I have wanted to hold on to those? Mm-hmm. Maybe because they went up so much in value. Yes. You know, maybe. But at the end of the day, there were some 
massive assessments that came in some buildings, and you never know I when you're going to get popped with like a hundred fifty thousand dollar assessment, wow. right? Jeez. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Wow, I mean, you know, you just never know. It could come out of nowhere, right. and it could happen. Yeah. And it's just a little too. I don't like. I like sleeping at night. Right. Right. Sleeping really. Me too. <laughs> me too. Yeah. Definitely. So so it seems like I like the security of more long term rentals. You know, and, 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 and not so risky areas. Yeah. You know. I like yeah. that. You're definitely, uh, obviously, a buyer, you know, for yourself. Yeah. Uh, but as an agent, you, uh, uh, one of your reels also that went viral is that you are able to do a hundred listings per year yeah. or more. Yeah. Um, do you have a, a secret to this? Uh, what you know? How do you get these hundred listings per year for again these agents that are right. only closing zero or one transactions in one year? You're doing a hundred. Well, I mean. That's a long story, right? right? But but the short of it is is that closings happen will happen have happened every single day mm-hmm. of your life and will happen every day for the yes. rest of your life. And there's more business than you can ever handle. So there's the national market, there's your local market, and then there's your the market of your business, mm-hmm. the buyers and sellers within your business that you're working with and trying to connect the dots mm-hmm. with. And the way that you build up to 100 listings a year is not from cold leads year one. Right, it's the cold leads year one that become warm leads year two because you mm-hmm. stay in touch with them. That's right. And then add more cold leads that create a bigger database for year three. Mm-hmm. Now you've got two years of cold leads that are now really warm because they've known you for one or two years. Yes. Then you have more cold leads that add on top of that. And so every year Amazing. your business does this yes. in terms of the amount of people that know who you are mm-hmm. and your brand expands. Now how do you make sure people never forget who you are? A weekly email, the same day of the week forever that you write yourself with your opinions on the market. And that, that's how you stand out, by bringing real value every week. And so email is a social media platform. You do this when you open your email. Yes. Right. And you're looking for interesting things to engage with. Same yes. thing with social. You're looking for right. interesting stuff. Okay. Mm-hmm. That's social. Email is social. Yes. That's right. It's yes. a place where you post original, consistent content. Mm-hmm. And so, for me, that's the platform because you own it. You own the data. And now every person in the database, there's a 90% chance they're going to see it at least in their inbox. They may not open it, but they're going to see it. You're going to get the impression. Versus social media is like a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5% organic reach. You can't ensure that that your database, seven years from now, is still seeing you on social media. Right. You can't. Oh, my God, you're right. The Mm -hmm. algorithm tells tells you what it wants to do. You don't tell it what. You're right. Mm -hmm. You don't don't put your database on social media and say, I want 100% of these people to see my content every time Mm -hmm. I post. Doesn't happen. Not going to happen. Never going to happen. That's Mm -hmm. right. However, when you get their data and you send a weekly email on the same day of the week forever, now they're like, oh, my God, that's oh the most consistent, God. dependable, hardworking yes. agent I've ever seen right. that gives me real value and their opinions right. on the market. Oh, my God. <laughs> yes. Inside information. Yes. It's, it's like it's this week going to be like, hey, you know, here's the market stats. Here's right. the new listings. And yeah. by the way, I showed three buyers in the last week. One made an offer. We're still looking for properties for the other. We're still trying to negotiate this thing. But anyway, I'm busy over here. If you need right. something, let me know. That's information they're not going to find on right. Google, Zillow, on the news, mm-hmm. nowhere. Yes. Now, you're giving yes. them inside information mm-hmm. on the market that they can get nowhere else but you, oh, and now that. they're locked into you. Yes. They're opening that email every right. single week because they right. want to see the new listings. That's right. They want to see what you think about what's going <laughs> yes. on. They want to see the new restaurants mm-hmm. or whatever you're mm-hmm. promoting. That's so And so, powerful. like, when it's on the same day of the week, yeah. Now they're like, this is the most dependable, consistent, hardworking, knowledgeable, mm-hmm. professional agent I've ever seen. It does yes. all the heavy lifting for you. You met them year one. Mm-hmm. Year four is when they want to buy. Mm-hmm. And you didn't t- call them in between. Mm-hmm. They just got to know you through this email and did all That's the right. heavy lifting for you. And all of a sudden, year four, they, they never they opened it like seven times in four years. Right. They didn't right. open it at all. Year <laughs> yeah. four happens. Uh-huh. They open it three weeks oh, in a row, call gosh. you on the fourth and say, hey, Ricky, remember yeah. me? You're like, hell yeah. <laughs> yeah. <I'm gonna laughs> that's right. I want to see this and make exactly. an offer. That's wow. how it works. So that's how wow. you scale to 100 listings that's a year. That's right. Wow is by the compounding of the relationships mm-hmm. over the years, but there's nothing else. You know, SMS is interesting, mm-hmm. right? Text messaging, it's okay. it's in, it's interesting. Yes. And it need like all the platforms need to be used. Mm-hmm. I mean, I do right. it all. Course, I have a Discord group, I have yes. SMS, I have email, I have all the social media Amazing. platforms, everything. Yes. Um, but for an agent, you can't do everything. I mean, I'm, I'm this is, social media is my job now. I don't sell real estate. Social media right. is my job. So I can do all the platforms. As an agent that runs a business, you've got to kind of pick and choose. Okay, what's my three platforms or two platforms or even one platform that I'm really going to like really go all in on. Yes. Um, but that's how you get to 100 deals a year. It's not from like, oh, there's this magical thing. I can When I talk to somebody, they're going to list right then and I can right. get 100 of these a year. No. Right. 
no, no, compounding no. the it's trust. Compounding the rapport and the trust and those relationships. Yes. And it's so um, easy to do. It's just people so are lazy. Easy, right? People Anybody just can, can do, do it. it. Yeah. If, if yeah. you made five new friends mm-hmm. a day mm-hmm. with property owners, mm-hmm. okay, 250 working days a year, and you put them all in this weekly email, right? After five years, that's 6,000 people. Now, how big is your business? Okay, and how big is your business if you've got 6,000 property owners that you chose, mm-hmm. right? You picked them out and said, I want to sell this house. I want to sell that house. Amazing. And you talked to the owner, made friends with them. Yeah. Right. That's the number one reason why somebody chooses an agent, because they had a friend in the market, right, that with a great reputation. That's right. Um, and you made friends with them. Mm-hmm. Maybe they yes. bought, maybe they didn't. doesn't right. matter. It doesn't right. matter. That's the same. When I talk to prospects, I don't care if they buy or sell. Because exactly. I'm going to get them now or later. Right. I'm just trying to, like, let them know I care. Right. And, like, you do what you want right. to do, but I'm here to help you when you do it. I'll stay in touch with you via email, bam. Yes. And now five years later, 6,000 people, property owners of your choice, get mm-hmm. a weekly email, how big is your business? Right. Wow. You're, probably the number, you're probably the number one agent in your market at that point. That's so amazing. And, and, and it goes back to what you said. Anybody, this is so easy, yes. a caveman could do absolutely right. yeah okay absolutely. right. And what's even more crazy <laughs> is that uh, if you're watching audience, obviously you, obviously you are. Um, I know you know that you've seen that email in your email where you just can't get it out of your head because you have been getting it for like four or five years because I have one of those emails from like agents That's right. or insurance people. And because their name is shown so many times in the last five years, I look at it and my eye even will catch that yeah. name because I've seen it so many times. I'm like, oh, there's that email again. And then, Definitely you, see makes email. Email. then you see their signs around mm-hmm. town. Maybe they called you and checked on you. Mm-hmm. Then you see them on social. You mm-hmm. see their video. Oh, wow. You know? And so, like, it's, it's, it's the puzzle it <laughs> of personal branding, yes. right? It's Got a piece it. of the personal branding mm-hmm. puzzle, yes. right? And it all plays together to create that picture for them yes. that you are the one. Right, and have you always been into personal branding? Is this something, dude? That- it was so crazy because in 2007 is when I got back in the business, right? Because mm-hmm. like I made a meal, lost it all in the crash. I was homeless, sleeping in my car, went no back way. to rig, wow. an oil rig. Yeah. Got back in in 2008. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Okay. Like I was literally eating out of my friends' refrigerators and stuff. No and you way. were married at the time? No, this no, no, no. I didn't get okay. married till five years ago. Okay. okay. So, okay. Ba- so this was five years ago when I got married. Okay. Like, and I met her after all this as well. Got, got it. it. And so before all that, I'm in my 20s. I got in real estate when I was 20. Okay. And made a million bucks quick. Okay. By the time I'm 23 is when the market started, you know, acting weird. 23, right. 24. By 25, I was done. I was bankrupt. I was, uh, w- like, somebody gave me their car. It was a beat-up Ford Taurus. It was crazy, dude. It was wow. The bathroom door <laughs> wasn't open. I had a boom box in the back so I could listen to stuff. I had to ride the, bra- I had to ride wow. the brakes. I had to ride the brakes when cops passed by so that lights, because the running lights wouldn't work. Uh-huh. Okay. So I had to ride the brakes and had to like tap on the brake a little bit oh to get the running light to God. come on. So wow. the cop wouldn't see that my, my back lights, my tail lights wow. wouldn't work. Oh, got it. And um, like, like, like that's how I was living. I was sleeping in that car. And so like at the time, like I was partying. Wow. Um, and so like a lot of people, they're like, how did you make it through that? Mm-hmm. Here's the thing, bro. I was in my mid 20s. There were guys that were 40, 50, and 60 years old right next to me Mm -hmm. that went through the exact same thing. They lost everything. Right. And I, at the time, was like, thank you, Jesus. Mm -hmm. I'm learning all these lessons in my 20s instead of my 40s, 50s, and 60s. That's right. My partners. Mm -hmm. And I was like, thank you, God. Yes. Now, let me go have some fun. Let me That's go to right. some houses. Let me party. Let me do my thing. Let me laugh. Yeah. Let me run around. Yeah. Let me sleep right. at different That's people's right. houses. Okay. Let me just go out here and go crazy. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. And enjoy this moment right. of lack of responsibility. No yeah. bills. I had no bills. Yeah. yeah. Dude, I, I had no bills. Right. And But I still was like, okay, like I was like this, and I got back to the bottom. Well, I'm not going to just stay down here. Like I'm doing this. So as I'm roofing houses... I'm making like three, four hundred bucks uh, a week. I'm like, okay, the, here's where I'm starting. And then I got a job on oil rig. It was five. I was making five G's a mile mm-hmm. every other week in Mississippi. I would drive to this oil rig, live on the rig, work there. It was it was wild. Really? I saw people. You lived on, a rig. Oh, I wow. lived on a rig, like in the middle rig. of the ocean. It wasn't in the ocean. It was okay, on land. But... It was in Mississippi. Okay, okay. So there's land rigs that go oh, for natural like, gas. Oh, wow, I never of course. Knew. Oh, it's insane, dude. Wow. wow. It was like big, huge ones, like they big have in huge the ocean. ones. Yeah, oh, yeah, wow. yeah. So I was out there working on those, and um, I got laid off from that in 2008 and I'd already been dabbling back into real estate. And so like um, in 2008, um, the, the branding thing. Mm-hmm, so like mm-hmm. 
I was, it was so crazy, bro. I bought a million email addresses. I filtered them down to the people in the Southeast that might vacation out to, to, to Gulf Shores and just emailed everybody and said, the beaches are just as nice, but condos are 50% off. Okay. I had a thousand people respond back and 20 people bought something. Wow. Yeah, and wow. within wow. that whole oh realm, you can't do that now because yeah. you can't spam walls and okay. stuff. Of course. Like, like, they'll shut your account down and oh, shit. Like, right. You can't even do that. This is the Wild okay. Wild West we're talking about. Of course. Okay, okay. And so, like, <laughs> amazing. Through that process, I had so many people say, send me a weekly list of foreclosures, right? Because there was like 50, 40, 50 foreclosures. Mm-hmm. Right 2008. Time. Yeah, 2008. Right. Like, uh-huh. it was in the midst of it. Right. right, yes. The easiest time in the world to sell real estate, dude. There were so many listings and no agents. Wow. And buyers were just like, no way. Let me just take I'm my so pick. jealous. That's right. It was so easy. Things yeah. were so cheap. It, it, it wasn't a hard sell. Okay. Like, <laughs> like, this property you love yeah. is actually 40% off from where it was That's right. two years ago. And they're like, <laughs> I'm I'll buy it. it. I'm buying Like, it was so yeah. easy. Wow. Yeah. Wow. People talk about the prices coming down, you know, yeah. like these bears talking yeah. about 40% price reductions. That's stuff, right. You know. What happened, dude? The Airbnb <laughs> bus, the shadow inventory, foreclosures, yes. Yes. Um, interest rates. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, what's the new one? Like, there's always some reason new. why there's these bears think right. it's going to go down 40%. <laughs> right. I'm, I'm, and, and they say it like, it's going to be a problem for me. Yeah. I'm like, bro. Do you know how many <laughs> properties I would sell if things went down 40%? That's right. right. Every time I'm in front of a uh, group of, all, uh, of agents, I'm yeah. like, how many of you guys have buyers that are waiting on prices to go down? And everybody's mm-hmm. like, I got 50 of them. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. like, so what do you think is going to happen if prices go down? Your uh-huh. business is going to explode. Exactly. Right? Right. Right. exactly. Exactly. And so like, people need to quit you know, acting like we as real estate agents actually care what the market does because uh-huh. we don't. Uh-huh. Newsflash. Uh-huh. But like, <laughs> they were telling they were telling me to do a weekly list of foreclosures, yes. and that's where the weekly email originated from. I've mm-hmm. been doing it every Wednesday since wow. 2007. Wow! Wow! Oh my gosh! And 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 it originated from me listening to my clients say, "I want a weekly list of foreclosures," uh-huh. and I started doing it. Then I turned it. I was like, "These hundred people want this, but I'll just open it up to all 300, and I'll keep growing the list. I'm sure everybody wants and to see this." And then as foreclosures went away, it morphed into just a market report. Wow. with my opinions on stuff. But you were doing this all on your yeah. own. Yeah. Like, I still do it on my own. Oh I, still my make, I still do my weekly email right wow. now. Oh my Amazing. God. Yeah. Because, because like has, AI back, there was no AI back then. Fuck AI. <laughs> <laughs> like it has to come out of yeah. my brain. Right. Yeah. Okay. You know, yes, like yes. AI doesn't know I showed three buyers right. in the last mm-hmm. week or That's what the right. inside mm-hmm. information is exactly. on the market. You can't get this information right. anywhere else except right. for right here. That's right. That's right. This is where the value is in here. Not a computer that knows history exactly right exactly so anyway the point was is that i started doing this email and i didn't realize that email was a social media platform right and i didn't realize i was building a personal brand i had mm-hmm. no idea like the people i was putting in there mm-hmm. is the same thing as followers yes and i did not realize that that's what i was doing until years and years later when i got into social media mm-hmm. i was like wow, this is what I did in real estate, not knowing it. Mm-hmm. Oh, I gosh. never used social media from a real estate business at all, ever, right? It was just phone calls, direct mail, weekly email to wow. stay in touch, oh build gosh. a million dollar business, right? Wow. But, but wow, people wow. are like, oh, do you want to use, you know, yeah, wow, you need your social media. Yeah, I did. It's called email, right? Mm-hmm. It did. is social yes, media. Most I, I was building my brand yes. online through this wow. email. Wow. And so, and so, yeah, like, I didn't know I was building a personal okay. brand, but I was. <laughs> that's and so that's amazing. how powerful it is. Wow. And, like, I developed these skills through uh-huh. that. Mm-hmm. did it for 10 years before I touched social media. Wow. I did it from 07 to 17 is when I started posting on social media. 10 years of that. Jeez. And then I and, and I built this million-dollar real estate business off of it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And then I literally took those skills and moved right over to social media to become one of the most well-known real estate agents in the world. Oh my God, amazing. Right? So the skill amazing. set that I used to build the real estate business, <laughs> yes. I used to build the coaching business. And wow. and following oh and, and following that blown. right there and following that, you said that you're building this huge business as a real estate agent, and you have a hundred listings. So for a lot of people that are trying to build a business, such just like yourself, yeah. how do they, how do you control the fact that people want to work with you? They want to work with Ricky Cruz, not with your right. team. Is how do you team, move it? I've never had a team, not going to have a team. So, so how do you, okay, yes, so you speak with that. every single that. person. Like, like, I, like, like, like I want to take half somebody's money for not doing anything. That's no, totally, sorry. right. I, again, I need to sleep at night. Same. Okay. I just have I'm not going to be a team leader and take half your money right. for nothing. Mm-hmm. I, I'll so, teach you how I to go you. do it on your own. Yes. I don't. I don't want half your money, bro. Right. Exactly. <laughs> you think I'm gonna, You think I feel good about stealing? Right. Half your right. money. Literally. Got and it. not Got doing it. anything. Cause I'm not gonna do it. I cannot sleep at night. I had this conversation with one of my agents yesterday, and I said the exact same. Here's thing. Here's the thing. Team leaders, right? Team team members as they come in, 
their objective is is to learn what they need to learn so they can go be their own agent one day. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Right. The team leader's objective is to retain that agent forever, forever. and make money off them forever. Exactly. So the so the goal of the agent and the team leader are complete opposite. That's right. And that's why the whole thing that's is amazing. broken mm. of so a traditional amazing. team model. Mm. So broken. Period. So broken. End of story. Exactly. And I then you have the the the, the agents. So, so the ambitious, the ambitious agents come in. They learn everything from you and leave quickly, right? And so they come and go. And so the ones you really want to keep leave. Mm-hmm. The team leader makes them feel like shit. Exactly. You ain't gonna do nothing without me. Right. Can't leave me leaving y'all. Yes. I did for you. <laughs> exactly. Right? Right. So they exactly. make them feel oh, we know. horrible we for know. leaving. Mm-hmm. That's right. And then, like the non-ambitious ones, stay forever and right. suck the ever-living life out of you. That's right. Yes. Yes. yes, but no thanks. Right. So being a team oh, we we know we we've known a yeah. few a few of those. Yeah, oh for God. sure. And it's so <laughs> it's so broken that I literally have not talked to another agent that has just said what you just said. Yeah, like it's it's so broken. Every single team lead wants that agent forever, mm-hmm. and it's like, are you kidding me? After two or three deals, after they learn, mm-hmm. I, you know, you're really gonna take fifty percent of right. their money. It's like yeah. robbing them. You know. Well, the other part of it is that they make the agents dependent on them for admin, marketing, and lead gen. They don't teach them how to lead gen. They don't teach them how to do contracts. Right. They don't teach them how to do marketing. Yeah. That's they right. Do it. Yeah. They just give them a bunch of shit leads uh-huh. and say, sit in a room and call them and go show them property. Hopefully, sell something. Give me half the money. Mm-hmm. Right. right. So the agent show go shows up there to learn how to be an agent. But then they don't teach them how to be an agent. They just teach them what they need to to make the team money. That's right. Right? And yes. so now the, the agent leaves the team a year later, mm-hmm. and you now you're starting at, at – right, I mean, yeah, you learned a couple of sales skills, and yeah. you showed some property, exactly. but, but you're still trying to figure out how to write a contract, right. how to do marketing, yes. where to get leads. Mm-hmm. You didn't learn any of that on the right. team, right? And exactly. this is general, traditional team model stuff. Yes. Right? What's, yes. what's yes. the best CRM you use to be able to – keep everybody in line you don't okay no. oh my god <laughs> i love all these <laughs> okay the thing is dude bro it's my clients your clients no clients care if you remember what their dog's birthday is mm-hmm. okay <laughs> and when and when if you take 30 minutes a week yes and multiply that times 52 it's 26 hours mm-hmm. okay while all all the agents are out there filling up their CRM with information that their clients don't even care if they remember mm-hmm. it's been in thir- just let's say they're spending 30 minutes spending more than that but 26 hours working man hours a year, that's the mm-hmm. difference in them doubling their business and not. And mm-hmm. they chalk that's it up amazing. to, oh, it's just 30 minutes a week. Right. No, it's 26 hours a year that could be the difference in you doubling your business yes. or not while yes. you're inputting information that doesn't matter. Right. It doesn't move the needle. Yes. And you're using it to hide behind so that you don't have to do the things that actually right. move the needle. Mm. Right. That's and this powerful. is why you're going to be an average agent forever because mm. you, you sit around inputting stuff into a CRM that doesn't matter. When those minutes could have been calls or Could have been connecting. in front of people. In front of people who may buy or sell right. that turn into more relationships exactly. through repeats, referrals, referrals, right. or referrals. Yes. So like good. I, I have to yes. go. I, mm-hmm. I, my business has to move. The needle yes. has to move. Yes. If the needle's not moving, mm-hmm. I'm not doing it. Right. Right. And so right. like, there's a sacrifice, right? Right. Because you want quality, yes. and you want these clients to know that they that you really care about them. So yes. you want to remember their birthdays and their home anniversaries and mm-hmm. and all that stuff. Mm-hmm. I sacrificed all that to set to, uh, and the way that I you know, say to myself about it is, mm-hmm. is, okay, yeah, I'd love to remember what day they bought their house and sent them a anna- home anniversary card and all that stuff. That would be cute. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but I'm going to sacrifice that yeah. for the sake of doing more business. Yes. And the way that I repay them uh-huh. for doing business with me is right. giving them the very best service during the deal. The deal goes so smooth. I go above and beyond. When fires pop up, they don't yes. even know about it because I just right. handled it. Yes. You know, answer my phone every single time. I give them updates. Right. Like, they're just like the experience they have during the deal. They're like never using another agent ever. Wow. They don't care if I tell them if I'm like, oh, happy home anniversary. Mm-hmm. That's not going to be what <laughs> wins them over that next time. Yes. The fact that the deal went so great during the deal is why they're going to come back to me. So I sacrifice things yes. that, yes, are good, like social media. Mm-hmm. I sacrifice social media. I knew that I was losing deals not doing social media as a real estate agent. I knew right. that. Right. But I was sacrificing that for what was working, mm-hmm. talking to more property owners, creating more relationships, doing more, putting, getting people in my weekly yes. email. Yes, yes. I could have used social media to do that as well, but mm-hmm. the thing is, is everybody has to figure out what works best for them and go all in yes. on That's what right. works best for them. And what works best for me doesn't work best for somebody else and, and on right. and on and on. That's right. So then wow. going back to Eli's question, how do you control the masses? Because again, if somebody can't even control one or zil- zero transactions in a full year. It's not that they can't handle know? it, right? They just haven't understood the process of lead generation, mm-hmm. True. right? True. They just don't True. have enough leads coming in 
to, mm-hmm. to convert into business. It's not that they can't handle it. It's just that they're not, that Very nobody true. has sat down and said, here's how you get Got people it. that might want to buy or sell. So then this is like a no-brainer for you, 100 listings in one year. It doesn't overwhelm you. No, 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 no. Me, me and my assistant, Christy, we were literally at the at our peak. We were closing 100 deals a year. Mm-hmm. Um, I stepped out of production two years ago. Yes. And we were doing 100 deals a year literally in our sleep. Like, we, it was literally nothing. I was spending like 10, 15 hours a week on my real estate business. Because wow. at that point, when you build the weekly email list up to a certain point, mm-hmm. you don't have to prospect anymore. Deals right. are just coming in. That's right. So it's not like I'm chasing business. <coughs> business is chasing me. That's amazing. So I'm not going after anything. That's when you amazing. build it right, right, you build it the way I teach agents to build it, then you don't, you don't have to go mm-hmm. look for business. Business so is coming to you. You're, all your hours are just focused on your I'm clients. just servicing now. Wow. They're calling me saying, this wow. is what I do. I'm like, okay, why do you want to do it? Okay, cool, this is this is the game plan. Okay, send you the paperwork. Right. Yes. You know, I'll go look at the property, or we're gonna yes. look at the property, we'll right. make an offer, here's yes. a listing agreement, whatever. It was just, it was just closed, I was just, Converting, 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 and just servicing. So fascinating because it all comes down to just service. Yeah. Right. Like it all comes down to just. We're in just a service industry. A lot of people think we're in sales. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But we're not. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and honestly, I don't even know if sales are sales. Mm-hmm. So <laughs> right. I think sales is service because, mm-hmm. yeah, you're selling yourself. Right. And you're trying to sell the fact that you're the best choice out of all the other agents. That's, yes. I guess, is the extent of the sales part of this business. Mm-hmm. But we're more in, like, service. what do you want to do? Right. Why do you want to do it? Yes. Okay, this is what the game plan. Like, you figure out what they want to do, why they want to do it, when they want to do it, how they want to do it, and then you help them do it. Whether it's the buy or sell now, buy or sell in six mm-hmm. months, buy or mm-hmm. sell next year, buy or sell in two years, it doesn't right. matter. Yes. We're not trying to, oh, you want to sell in two years? Well, what if we could do this now? Mm-hmm. I'm not trying to get them to fast forward the process to close a deal today. Right. I'm just listening to them because once I start going against what they want to do, now I don't think that they're going to feel like I'm on their team. That's right. And now they're going to go find an agent who actually is on their team and, and aligns That's with right. what their timeline is. Yes. Instead of trying to force the issue earlier, right. I never liked that. I feel like I want Same. a lot of business because, um, you know, I was okay with whatever they wanted to do. I'm mm-hmm. just here to help them do it, exactly. whatever their timeline is, because they're going to do a deal. Right. I want them to do it with me. Yes. If I try to force it, I may lose mm-hmm. the deal. Exactly. Of course. Right? Exactly. Well, Ricky, you have, you have a ton of knowledge. I mean, what, what's something that you have considered for your future? So you have 40, un, 40 doors. Let's go back one, okay. one moment. You were asking about the 100 people. I wanted yes. to get to the root of that. Like, right. I have 100 people. Where were you going with that question? So, so the question was, how do you, if somebody wants to work with you and you have 100 listings, Yeah. Well, how I do you? I have 100 listings. See, this okay. is the thing. I, don't, I got 100 listings within a year. Right? Within listings a year, got it. And everything, right? I don't have Understood. active 100 listings. Okay, Working got it. sweet spot wise, mm-hmm. see everybody has a different benchmark of what they can handle. That's right. So like mine was always, I wanted 20 to 30 active listings mm-hmm. and 10 to 20 pending deals. Got that it. was like my happy place. Like that, I'm standing on my head, like chilling, <laughs> like <laughs> not a worry in the world. <laughs> right. Maybe one or two of those are kind of fire type deals. And, yeah. You know, there's some weird stuff is going yeah, on, yeah. but like the other, 19 are good to go like all good that was my happy place yeah 20 to 30 actives 10 to 20 pendings and um so like it wasn't a hundred right and so right. the listings it's just like um yeah i'm gonna i'll reach out i'll, I'll take a half a day and reach out to all the sellers twice uh, uh, twice a month every other week right give an update how many times it's been shown people are saying any market changes around the property and stuff like that that's easy. That's a half a day. I blocked out every other week, and mm-hmm. boom, that's done. The pending deals, I would just look at the list of pending deals every day yes. and say, okay, where are we at on this one? Do I need to do something? Do I need to call this person and check on the title company? Do I, where's the inspection on this one? Where did we get the prequal? Like, earns money in? Like, and I would just go through, Powerful. and that would take me like an hour every day to just go yes. through the deals, make a couple right. calls, make yes. sure everything's cool and moving forward. Mm-hmm. So just think about it. I spent about an hour a day on my pending deals, mm-hmm. and then like a half a day every other week on my active listings. So now I'm at, you know, basically six and a half, you know, five and a half hours per week, mm-hmm. basically servicing the pendings and the and the actives. So now I'm at five and a half hours. Now what am I doing on top of that? Well, going to show property, mm-hmm. maybe going to a closing, mm-hmm. going to a listing appointment, you know, maybe an inspection here and there, <laughs> stuff right, like that, right? right? Yeah. So it wasn't, it wasn't really demanding. Got it. Got yeah, it. love that. Love yeah, that. when you have your, when you have a lot of experience and you know how to do deals and you yes. understand the intricate details of the process, it, it's like breathing. Like it's just it's just easy. And I can't agree with you more. So I've been in mortgages for twenty two years. And you you've been in real estate for twenty two. So it's very common for me to get a standard phone call. Hey, I want to do a loan. I want to do a loan. So it's very simple. I do have a system around it because in loans it's very 
paper paperwork. Yeah. Because there's so much numbers right. and it changes, ongoing changes, we right? For that. Right. Right. So I mean, I had a great assistant. She's still with us. She's been with us ten years now. Mm -hmm. She still works with us. You know, Dad handles all the listings and sales now. My father. Amazing. And um, and she still handles everything. Oh, wow. And she handles all that paperwork side. Yeah. So that was a good. Yeah. That that was how. I was able to do all that Got with such it. little effort. It's because she's doing all the paperwork side and all the MLS work and setting up showings with them. You know, when you have 30 active listings, you got a lot of agents trying to show your properties. Mm -hmm. She takes all those calls. She sets Amazing. up all those showings. Amazing. You know, so wow. she's handling all that stuff yeah. for me to where I can breathe. Got it. I can think. Got I can it. just deal with what moves the needle, That's which right. is the pendings, the listings, and any. Um, hot prospects right. that are looking to buy or sell. Okay. You have no idea how many agents that are in their circle that want to do everything. Mm -hmm. And the reality is they should just know how to build a system by having that assistant that can do the paperwork. Yeah. And, and I think that's smart because a lot of people don't, they don't know how to trust someone to do those little steps when the reality they should be the face. Yeah. Well, the reason they don't trust anybody is because they haven't done it themselves. Yeah, that, that makes so much sense, yeah. Right, if right. you don't understand the process, you can't yeah. teach somebody else to do the process. Exactly. Right, exactly. that's it. Right. So like I didn't get an assistant until I had 30 active listings. Mm. Wow. So I mean I was doing I was cranking deals, mm -hmm. closing deals, doing all the paperwork, doing yes. all everything, yes. MLS, doing the whole right. thing, and then um, and then the cloud-based uh, uh, platforms came along where uh, all the documents started to become updated into the cloud. I mean before mm -hmm. that we were given our given the office secretary mm -hmm. hard copies like no printed paper oh right my god i don't know how you would yeah, do we it we were handing them <laughs> oh like, like well, so we would go to a listing appointment mm -hmm. get the contract signed like in person oh my god and then and then literally yeah. hand that off to somebody yeah. and then you're done they put it in a file it. of cabinet and they, they process it like oh, it, wow. they don't wow. have to worry about it okay, okay but then when they switched to it was lone wolf at the time the okay. the, the, the cloud based Mm -hmm. filing cabinet right so mm -hmm. every brokers now is putting all their documents in the cloud that's right yes. that's when right when this first came out it added a whole nother task to my job mm -hmm. where now i'm not handing it off to that now i have to upload all this stuff to a cloud yeah. i have mm -hmm. to name the file and that's i have to do right. all this stuff oh, yeah. that's right and i was mm -hmm. like i'm not doing this <laughs> <laughs> so at the time yeah. I had yeah 30 active listings i was getting bombarded by agents trying to show my listings and then this got thrown into the mix oh, shoot. i was like boom i hired oh, wow. somebody right then oh, wow. to take over uploading stuff to the cloud and handling showings for other agents trying to show my listings take those two tasks off my shoulders and now i can continue to grow a little bit wow. right and then as the assistant got that down then I just added more tasks, you know, to take more off my shoulders Amazing. until her whole role got filled. So new agents like want to go out and hire an assistant, but they have no idea what to tell them to do. Right. Well, right. sell right. some right. properties and mm -hmm. get some listings. That's and stuff, right. And we'll exactly. figure yeah. out what yeah. you need That's them right. to do. Exactly. And then you hire them to do that. <laughs> right. Exactly. Everybody yes. has a different bottleneck in their business. <laughs> yes. For me, it was 30 listings and having agents trying to show my listings. Okay. I had to get that taken off my shoulders. Got Fantastic. It. For y'all, it may yes. be something different. It may be just mm -hmm. put stuff in the MLS or, right. you know, doing this thing or yes. email. Yes. Everybody runs into a bottleneck. Got it. Work. So you find the bottleneck, then hire somebody to do, to, to take over the that's bottleneck. That's right. That's amazing. That's exactly. the process. Wow, that's so powerful. And when you do it yourself for a long yeah. time, you do all the paperwork yourself, you know how to do it. Right. You need to know how to do it. Like there's some brokerages that handle it all, and I'm like, well, the new agents are never going to know how to write a contract. Mm -hmm. Well, they don't need to know how to write how how to well, not write a contract, but like process everything and do mm -hmm. that. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking. You're trying to make agents dependent on you. Yes, exactly. So the they never leave your brokerage. <laughs> exactly. I get it now. Yeah. I get why right. they're doing it. You know? Right, exactly. exactly. Well, it, it's a wild game. Real estate is so crazy right now. Well, you know, we've. Uh, I appreciate you being on this podcast. I know you've been on a couple of them. And honestly, like, I'm sure everybody that's going to be watching these reels and the full podcast is going to start going out there and hustling, I hope. Yes, right? right. I mean, you right. guys got the magic guy here yes. showing everybody what to do to build your real estate business. and. Right. You've done it, and you built something that's very credible. You know what's interesting to me right now is um, owners that are sitting on four percent rates. They don't. They a lot of them want to move, but they can't because they can't afford seven percent rates, right? Mm -hmm. And so there's kind of a stalemate. We're starting to see it thaw out a little bit, but for the most part, people are still sitting still. So back yeah. when I was building my business, my bread and butter was calling property owners, just randomly, and saying, "Hey, a property in your mar in your area sold. Just call to see if there's something I could do to help you." That was my bread and butter. I mm -hmm. built my entire business off that. Wow. It worked like a charm because oh people were always thinking about moving mm -hmm. and interest rates weren't or were about the same as they were when they bought. And so mm -hmm. they were just trading even for even. Can't okay. do that now. Right. You have to call with urgency. You have to call with situations. You have yes. to call with 
something Market to offer. Or, so yeah. I just want to leave you guys in the audience with, with this, with the, 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 the greatest strategy that I've ever seen. I did this last week. I made live calls last week. It's on my YouTube, the last video I posted. Oh, wow. Literally, I was on a Zoom call, and I said, okay, guys, you know, there's like four or 500 agents. I was like, you guys vote on what property you want me to sell today. So I was on my MLS, I was screen sharing. Mm -hmm. Literally they voted, oh they God. picked off this house for 1.7 on the water. Okay. I was like, okay. I went and I did a circle around the subdivision and pulled all the non-waterfront houses mm -hmm. uh, in the same subdivision, right? It's like 250 of them. Boom, hit dial, started calling them. I said, hey, I see you've got this house that's not on the water in this subdivision. I've got a really nice waterfront one. Have you thought about being on the water? Oh my God. So you can literally do this with any listing. So say you got a $20 million five bedroom, Yes. right? Mm -hmm. You call all the four bedrooms around it. Hey, I see you're on Sunset and you got a four bedroom. Do you need a five? I got a really nice one I'd love to show you. Wow. And so now I'm calling not to try to get them to do something mm -hmm. for me, like give me a listing. I'm not trying to take something from them. This, okay. is, this is why agents are scared wow, to make calls. I see that. They're scared to make calls because the perception is, is that they're calling to convince them to give them something. That's Unless right. You need to sell. Do you need to sell? Yeah, 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 yeah. Have you thought right. about selling? Right. You consider selling? Yes. Got to buy for your house right. type stuff? Right. And, and the sellers heard it all. Yes. And you know what they say? Oh, I might sell in six months. Yeah, right. That's a cop out. They have no, no intentions to sell in six months, mm -hmm. but they know it works because they know when they say that, the agent goes away and never calls them back because yeah. they That's just right. to follow up. Right? That's right. Oh, That's right. right. So <laughs> when somebody says, I'll sell in six months, I'm like, what's going on in six months? <laughs> okay. What you got going on in six months has yeah. got you thinking about selling in six months. You want to start right. the process in six months? You want to close in six months? Because that's two different timelines. That's right. Like, tell me more about what's going on so I can help you, sir. So I dig, 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 dig. I don't just say, oh, okay, I'll, sell, I'll, call, I'll call you in six call months. Like, I got to know why I'm calling, when we're calling, what the game plan is. You yes. tell me you're going to sell in six months? Yes. That's like that. Like, <laughs> we need to get started today. That's right. 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 When can I come right. look? Let's meet. Yeah. Blah, That's blah, blah. Right. right. But my point is, is that I can take any listing. I don't care what it is. And I find the owners around it that have a lesser property. And I say, hey, I see you've got this house. I've got a newer one right here mm -hmm. are you looking for a better quality you, you, you need a bigger house i'm trying to make your life better i'm I, now i'm not mr i'm trying to get a listing That's i'm right. mr i want to give you a better quality of life i <laughs> right. want to give you a bigger house i want to give right. you a nicer house i want to yes. give you a better view mm -hmm. and this is what i'm teaching right now fantastic is how to target those owners around these properties of any property you want to sell you can do this with anything and this is how commercial real estate agents work by mm. the way this is how they operate and they've been doing this this is how they operate for years and years and years and I'm like, I put it all together and I'm like, wow, this is the greatest strategy I've ever heard because yes. when they don't want to buy that $20 million five bedroom, but you, you call it offering them something instead of just trying to take, now they're like, I like this person. You know what? I'm going to open up and tell them what I really want to do. That's right. Now they, they want to buy this investment property over That's here right. or sell the strip center or do yes. something else. Fantastic. Wow. You got the conversation started. Wow. But you can literally find a buyer for any listing in one day. Wow. Right. Any lead you want, wow. the exact lead that you want in a day. Wow. You got you got a five hundred thousand dollar home that cash flows. Oh, hey, listen, I see you got a house over here. I don't know if you buy rental properties or investment properties, but I got one over here. It's it's five hundred k. It cash flows about whatever. You know, is that something you might be interested in? You can do it with anything, but taking listings and targeting the property owners who are the most most highly probable buyers for that mm -hmm. property. Oh God, you can get into luxury like this. Wow. You can do commercial, you can do any kind of residential, golf front condo, anything you want. And you, you get these owners for a penny. Mm -hmm. And so what I'm saying is, mm -hmm. is like, mm -hmm. when you wake up in the morning as a real estate agent with a strategy, you're like, Doo -doo -doo, what listing am I gonna sell today? Wow. And you just pick out whatever you want and that's your job for the day, wow. selling that listing. You can literally make 200 calls you know, in a couple hours wow. and try to sell that listing and guess what? You talked to 18 people and, and 11 of them loved you, weren't ready to do anything, but gave you their email, had a great conversation, Amazing. and we're gonna do 10 to 20 deals with each of them over the, over the life of our career. Because right. when I think about it, I'm like, an agent wants to be an agent for like 20, 30 years. Mm -hmm. So when I'm talking to a prospect, I'm not thinking, what can I get them to buy or sell, or if they're gonna buy or sell today or not. I'm thinking about how many deals are they gonna do over the next 30 years exactly. and be responsible for referring out to an agent over the mm -hmm. next 30 years. Because I'm trying to jam as many transactions as I can into a 30 year period. I don't wow. give a shit about 2024. Yeah. Exactly. That's right. Me exactly. doing my job to, yes. to, to fill up the pipeline for my career yes. makes me, you know, 
organically, mm-hmm. right, mm-hmm. as a byproduct, crush 2024. Right. See what I'm saying? Now right. I'm building my short-term business and my long-term business at the same time mm-hmm. as I'm literally becoming the number one agent in my market. Wow. And everybody's like, how'd you do it? Mm-hmm. Oh, this dude from Alabama, he told me, just <laughs> pick out any listing, call the owners around and do a weekly email. <laughs> Right? So easy. Right. It's so <laughs> that's easy. What it is. Oh, okay. <laughs> man, man could, could do, do it. it. Oh, Come on, caveman. You guys God. can do it. Wow. That was some golden nuggets you just dropped right now. So if you're in real estate and you're not doing this, because I'm about to go do this right after we leave. That's he's going like, to you know, go do it. Listen, yeah. You know? When you hear this, you can't <laughs> like, unhear it. I can't, yeah. like, literally, you can't unhear And you start thinking about properties. You're like, oh. I was like, oh, yeah, Beverly Hills. Because <laughs> you know what the say. problem is? Yes. Agents only do half their job. The 50%. Mm-hmm. They find the seller. They wait on another agent to find the buyer. Mm-hmm. They put mm-hmm. on MLS. They wait on another agent to find the buyer. Right. They find the buyer. They wait on another agent to list the property. Mm. Right. Our job right. is to connect buyers and yes. sellers. Yes. That's right. The whole yes. thing. That's and all we're thing. only doing half our job. Right. Right. right? And, and, you're, so, you're, and, and I'm like, wow. you, you have the national back. Back to what I said. You got the national market. Mm-hmm. You've got the local market. Yes. Mm-hmm. And then you've got your business market within your business, yes. your buyers and sellers. How can we connect the dots? <laughs> How can we connect the dots? So That's powerful. right. Wow. Oh my God. Amazing. Amazing. And I'm not scared to go make calls now because your concept is so powerful. No, 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 no. This is what's so powerful about like, it. I'm so it's the sure. easiest call in the world like, to so make. Sure. Like, <laughs> and wow. after I said this on stage, yeah. I went through this whole thing. <laughs> okay. And this new agent had a question and she's like, I just don't feel confident um, you know, with convincing a seller to sell their $8 million home. And I said, did you hear anything right. I just said? Right. right. This is how brainwashed oh we are gosh. as agents. Wow. We're brainwashed into wow. thinking we have to call sellers to see right. if they'll sell their right. property. Exactly. When in reality, if we're calling to offer them value, if, 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 so if they don't want to buy, but they yeah. want to sell, guess right. who they're going to go with? Right. That's right. right. We just listed a property. <laughs> right. I made, th- I made 12, I called 12 homes. It was 27 numbers because it's multiple numbers for some homes. Mm-hmm. It was 12 homes. I talked to three of them. All mm-hmm. three of them were leads. The first one wanted to sell and buy. Not the house I was calling about, oh but they wanted to 1031 into another investment. It was a second home for them. Got mm-hmm. it. The second person is selling. Mm-hmm. She has a bum knee. She has to move back to Birmingham. She already had an agent, but she's selling. Okay. So it was a live prospect. Amazing. The third one, not selling anytime soon, but had a great conversation. All these conversations wow. are on my YouTube. You can hear wow. the phone calls. Oh, my gosh. I'm good. And, and like you... The third one, long conversation, nice conversation, you know, very nice lady, got her email, going to do business later, right? Had no intention any time to sell now, but all three of those wow. were great conversations. And it's so easy, but this is how programmed we are. We're programmed to think two things. One, we have to call sellers to see if they'll sell. Right. Asking. And that's scary, it's right? Because now we're trying to take something yes. from someone. That's right. And B, we have to make social media to try to get buyers to call us. Mm-hmm. 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 Fuck that. Mm-hmm. That's right. Right? Wow. I, listen, would you rather have 30 active listings or 30 active buyers? Listings. listings. Okay. Absolutely. You know what I would want? Buyers. Okay. Really? Yeah. Who also have to sell. Oh, got it. Right. Yeah, of and course. That was like well, of course. Yeah. See, that's I the thing. Because <laughs> let me take it a step further, right? Right. right. And we're brainwashed. Let, let me continue. We're brainwashed. <laughs> let me continue to blow yeah. your mind. Okay. okay. Right? I'm like, well. Mr. Real Estate Agent, yeah. let me continue to blow your okay. mind. When I do the when I do the business like I just told you to do it, yes. guess what? Mm-hmm. I'm setting myself up to do two deals today. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Cause when they buy, they're gonna sell that. Yes. I did two yes. deals today now. I'm lit. See, like as as amazing Maybe. as you were before I said that. Yeah. yeah. Now what what's up? Mm-hmm. Like now you, now I just said you're doing two deals with this mm-hmm. now because a lot of people are like, oh, I'll take a buyer all day because they're gonna buy and then later on they'll sell. Uh-huh. I'm like. I'm trying to get you to have the buyer that's selling now. That's God right. Yes. Don't buy Zillow yeah. leads. Uh-uh. Oh my God. Just get the property owner that, that wants to buy and sell. You got a $20 million home. They're going to sell their $12 million home to buy it. You just did $32 million. You that's could literally, amazing. every agent watching could literally amazing. be working on $30 million yes. worth right. of deals right. tomorrow. Wow. Every single right. agent <laughs> right. that's in right. like right. a high luxury market yes. that has $20 million home. Yes. You could literally, there was a guy going to show a rental property in Brickell in Miami. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. You know, I called him. Like I call ra- agents randomly sometimes and say, hey, they're like, oh my God, it's you. Amazing. Like, is this AI? Yeah, right. And I'm right. like, <laughs> and sometimes I mess with them and I'll say, hey, it's Ricky. And they're like, oh, you're, I was like, 
no, it's really AI. It's really AI rig. Oh, and wow. like, oh, like, no, I'm just kidding. Yeah. It's really me. Oh, my God. Yeah, when you called me earlier, I was like, is this is it AI? Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, um, he was going to show this rental property, which I'm yes. sure they'll make like he'll make like a thousand bucks or something. I said, dude, right, right. I said, aren't there eleven million dollar condos for sale there? He's mm -hmm. like, yeah. I said, you know, you can get the five million dollar condo owners around it for a penny and call them and see if they want the eleven million dollar one, right? He was like, what? I was like, yeah. You can call the $5 million property owners and see if they want to buy the $11 million, whatever the sales pitch is. Is it bigger? Yes. Is it nicer? Is it a better view? Whatever it is. Right, right. You can literally pitch them on the $11 million one. You could do. You could be doing that right now instead of driving to show a rental uh, a, a right. rental property to a renter. You could be doing that right now. He's like, our, he was just like mind blown. He was wow. like, you just changed my whole life. Oh, my God. Yeah, he's like, it, like people should be jumping out of their skin. Right. So Here, true. Right. Yeah. I'm like so, so true. shook. And I... And I'm going to be very honest with you. My mind has been brainwashed to be scared to call sellers. But if it's because I'm asking them for something and I'm right. like, now That's I'm right. going to give them something. Yes. My mind is blown. And yes. It's something so simple. It's so and simple. I've been doing this for eight years. And this isn't a new years. concept, by the way. Wow. Yeah. This isn't new. This is a new concept, right? Mm -hmm. It just, nobody is putting it out there. Nobody mm -hmm. is like mm -hmm. framed right. it up this way or explained right. it in this manner. Yes. And I think it's the most powerful thing I've ever Hurt. I literally, in my mind, wow. am throwing everything else away. Direct mail, mm -hmm. circle prospecting expires for self owners. I'm throwing it all in the wow. garbage because I literally can create any lead I want to out of thin air. It's like it, it's I'm putty so in your sure. hands. I was like paying like eight thousand dollars a month for Zillow, mm -hmm. and I could be paying pennies. So Red X, wow. right? Red mm -hmm. X for for mm -hmm. like two hundred fifty bucks. Okay. You can pick out in your market seventy five hundred property owners per month. Mm -hmm. For two hundred and fifty bucks, oh, my gosh. you can pick seventy five hundred of your choice. Red X, Red X. Of your choice. Wow. Okay. Redxdiscount.com. Okay. Right. That's where you can get the best deal. Redxdiscount.com. Right? Yeah. Got it. Redxdiscount.com gives you the best deal on GeoLeads Plus, which gives you the email, cell phone of any property owners, literally pennies, and then and then and then and then it has an auto dialer. Uh -huh. Right, they'll give yes. you a registered number so your number doesn't pop up as spam. Of course, you know, use that number and fucking triple dial and just oh sit back. Cause the thing is, oh, oh my god, dude. <laughs> okay, 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 okay. So check this out. Check this out. Check this okay. out. So you have a four bedroom for sale. Yes. You literally with Geo Leads, you you literally draw a circle around the subdivision, mm -hmm. and then you say, I want these owners. Right. You, let's say there's four hundred owners. Okay. Mm -hmm. It it boom within a matter of seconds downloads the list of data. Right. Then you go to this thing that says uh, search filters or yes. filters, right? Yes. Or more filters. Right. You hit that and you say, I want three bedrooms and less. Wow. Okay. It can even, it has a lot of filters like uh -huh. age, right. square footage, yeah. all okay. kinds of shit. But okay. let's just say you got a four bedroom. Yes. And you pull up 400 owners around it and you literally filter out all the four bedrooms or more. Right. You get three bedrooms and lower and it takes it from 400 to say 250. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Right. This thing is concentrated. You literally do this in a matter of seconds. Concentrated, three bedrooms, okay. and you just hit triple dial, and you don't really wow. care because, like, it's calling three people at once, but you don't really care. You just sit back, and it's just yeah. like, whoever answers, it doesn't matter because right. you know yeah. they got a three bedroom. <laughs> yeah, that's right. And so you don't. Right. You're just like, hey, Mister, <laughs> look at the name on there, right. Franzioli. Yeah, how you doing today? Yeah, you know. Uh, you know, I'm whoever with whatever yes. real estate company. I'm right here in Beverly Hills. Right. I, you know, whatever. How you doing? Mm -hmm. Good. Me too. I'm enjoying the day. Isn't yes. it gorgeous out there? Right. Okay. Nice, isn't it? That's you know, right. Blood last week, huh? Yeah. That's right. right. Yeah. And That's like, right. I don't want to take too yes. much more time. I see you've got a three bedroom there on on Rodeo uh -huh. Drive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like, you need a four bedroom? <laughs> yes. I got a really nice one right down the road. I'd love to show you. I need one. And then I you just one. see what they wow. say, and then you know what happens? I'm Magic. But the thing is, is the technology. You can literally go boop, boop, three bedrooms, bam, auto dial, boom. Dude, in, in one hour, this Zoom call was one hour last week. Mm. Within one hour, I, I had time within the hour okay. to explain to them what I was going to do, uh -huh. let them vote on the property that I was going to call about, did research on the property, look at comps and look through pictures and like become a little familiar right. with it, Right. then look up the owners around it, then filter them down to the non-waterfronts, then hit dial and had enough time within the hour to call 27 numbers and talk to three people, which were three leads. All of that happened within one hour, right? Now, as a real estate agent, you're not gonna explain what you're doing, have people vote. You're just gonna be like, I'm gonna sell that listing. Here's the, you can literally find everybody with right. five, you can find a listing and all the people are gonna call in five minutes. That's right, yeah. And wow. start calling, and these are wow. the most, the, it, it's two deals when they do like so, what other situation oh is God. there where you literally pick out your client right. 
get them for a penny uh-huh. that have the possibility of two deals happening mm-hmm. that you know for sure. Where? Where is this? I have no clue. I'm then why clear. are we doing anything wow. else? That's wow. right. Call all morning <coughs> to try to sell that listing and do social media all afternoon. Do a weekly email. You are fucking done. Wow, Let's powerful. Go. That wow. Was so freaking powerful. Ricky, that's oh amazing. God, that was amazing. Dude. Guys, seriously, you guys got to follow Ricky Caruth. Where else can they find you? Everywhere, dude. If you put Ricky Caruth in anywhere, I'm like at the top. Let's yeah, at the go. top. Yeah, Google, uh, YouTube, YouTube, and, and everything. Yeah, YouTube, Instagram, <laughs> Facebook, okay. uh, you know, Twitter. Alabama. Yeah. Yeah. Alabama, LA, New York, you know. Everywhere, yeah. I love that. Exactly. Love it. Love it. Yeah, absolutely. No, no, no. My coaching program, it's at zerodiamond.com. Okay. Zero to Diamond. So I have a coaching program, 100 bucks a month. I do a weekly call. There's 600 agents in there. I just started two months ago. Right, that's how fast it's grown. Zero to diamond.com. Zero to diamond.com. Okay, per- okay. what, what yeah. gave you the idea of that name? Well, diamond is a million bucks a year in the Remax system. Okay. And so at the time, I was hitting diamond. I was making okay. a million bucks a year. And Love I was that. just like, you know what? I went from zero to diamond. You know, I like, like it. I got to zero one time you know? at one point. Like Love I lost it. everything. I was literally zero, yes. less than zero. Okay. I should have been like, Less than zero to diamond. <laughs> diamond. Okay, yeah, be like, zero. It was like zero to diamond, okay. and that's what I named the first book that I wrote, oh, Zero to Diamond. Yes. Fantastic. And, um, so it's just something that I just, Love I don't it. know how or why I came up with it, and Definitely. the domain was available. There you go. Somehow, cool. and it just kind of all came to be, but yes. yeah. You'll see um, us on uh, Zero to Diamond for sure. So y'all yeah, got to be diamonds for yes. sure. Yeah, yeah. You, could, you can join the platform for free, and for Amazing. free, you can get all my scripts, my phone oh, scripts wow. that are just oh unique to me. I'm so all my there. email, you know, the weekly yes. email, I have yes, weekly yes. email templates. Okay, so there. you'll be in my to email make, To make the weekly email. So he's signing up. It, it's right. already happening. Yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. I'm so there. You can make so the weekly email very yes. easy to do Amazing. using my templates. Because, like, agents kind of get lost in the sauce. of like, what do I put and stuff? So I made it really easy with this four-week template system. Fantastic. Wow. Um, yeah. So That's outside great. of that, man, I'm, I'm traveling. I'm, I'm always Love on tour. It. You know, between so. September and now, mm-hmm. like yesterday was my first one back since okay. like September. So oh, between, wow. I take the winter off great. and just kind of regroup. Amazing. And then from like February to September, it's like three, you know, two or three cities a month. Fantastic. Wow. I'm traveling wow. around and speaking to agents all over. Amazing. So, wow. Amazing. Yeah. Well, you're, you're having an event soon, right? Yeah. So, um, Every week I have one. I'm, I'm in, I'm in uh, Montgomery, Alabama next week, mm-hmm. and then I'm in New York for the Gold Bar Live the week after with Josh Got Altman, it. Ryan Serhant, Aaron Kerman. Loves um, it. Tal Alexander. Fantastic. Uh, you know, all, all the highest, biggest luxury, you know, agents Powerful. out there. Wow. Um, that's going to be incredible. My wow. guy is uh, Juan is, is mm-hmm. actually, you know, put it all together. He's my partner in, in, wow. on, on the Zero to Diamond uh, yes. and the coaching program. Wow. Oh, wow. And then I'll be in Houston the week after that. So okay. I've got, you know, four weeks yeah. here back to back traveling and then there I'll be home go. for one week and then I've got two more back to back. Wow. So I'm always on the road just trying to um, help these agents understand yes. how easy this business actually is, you wow. know, because I break it down for them really simple. And my, the goal is, is when I leave a, an event, for people to have listened and be like, I can't unhear what I just heard. Right. Mm-hmm. That's and, me and right now. That's yeah. me right now. There's no, like, now, for you, like, now there's no excuse. Mm-hmm. Like, you're either going to go crush it. Like, literally. I literally gave you everything you gave you me to everything. crush it. Like, if I don't go and have 100 listings, I don't know what I'm doing. Like don't you quantify literally. it like that, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Quantify it not to the number of listings. Quantify it to how much work you're willing to put true, in. Mm-hmm. True, true. We, we get so caught up in the results and the goals, and we want to hit these numbers. Mm-hmm. You're never going to hit the number. You're either going right. to go way past it, or you're going to go yes. way lower than it. I yes, mean, everyone's yes. and, and, and the people that hit it, they hit it and then and then and then let off because they hit it. They could have right. went a lot further. Of right? course, right, right. For me, it's not about it's it, it's not about expectations. I've traded my expectations for standards a long time ago. Mm-hmm. It's not about the expectations that I'm going to achieve this or achieve that. It's about the standards that I set for myself, mm-hmm. and I'm going to outwork everybody every single day. Oh. And I'm going to continue to look for hacks in the system like I just explained to you. Like This this is what I think about all the time. Mm-hmm. How can I hack the system of getting more listings? Mm-hmm. How can I hack the system of getting more followers? Mm-hmm. How can I get mm-hmm. in front of more people? How can I hack, 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 hack yes. the system? Yes to achieve and achieve and achieve because that's what it is. It's cheat codes, wow. yeah. right? It's cheat yes. codes to the algorithms. Yes. It's thinking of things like I just explained with right. calling property owners that could upgrade. That's a cheat code. Yes. That's right. Right. Yes. The weekly email is a cheat code. Yes. And so that's what I think about all the time. And, and I'm always on the, the search for the next cheat code that I can use to advance my position in the world as somebody who influences agents and people to just keep chasing their dreams. 
Amazing. Thank you. Fascinating. Thank you so much. Please Ricky, thank you so much for being on our podcast. Really Perfect. appreciate you. And um, you guys know where to find them. And uh, you guys will see some of the reels uh, that we're going to be releasing really soon. So. Loves it. Thank you for everything. Thanks for everything. Yeah, no, I, I'm glad to be here. Golden nuggets. Let's go. <laughs> thank you, guys. Love no, actually, thing. diamonds. Oh, golden nuggets. No, no, not, not zero to diamond. There you go. Zero. <laughs> That's it. It's like when you go to zero to diamond, yeah, you'll love this. Like when you go to zero to yeah. diamond, it takes you to a, another platform. Is gold bar. Okay. 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 Yeah. There you go. Good. So gold and diamond. <laughs> okay. Yeah, there you diamonds. go. Thank I love you. it. So much, gold plus diamonds are. Uh, Loves it. A boy and a girl's best friend. Like let's go. There you go. Hey, let's go. Guys, thank you so much. Appreciate thank you guys. You guys have a good one. So much.